it is chilly outside. We're about to have historic rain here in Southern California. So I am cozy and comfy and drinking some coffee. <laughs> My name is Amanda, aka Ace, and welcome or welcome back to Ace Creates. Today I have a whole bunch to talk about. I haven't done a podcast episode since before the holiday season in December, and I have several finished objects uh, and a couple of whips and some acquisitions. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you would like from a project and let's get into today's podcast episode. This is the first podcast of the new year. Um, I'm going to be doing it a little bit different instead of numbering them 12, 13, 14, whatever number I was at. I'm just going to do it by the year. Um, I think that's a little bit easier to organize. So this is the first podcast episode of the new year and we have lots to talk about. I have my notes just in case you see me looking down. But the first thing we're gonna do in finished objects is uh, my double Oslo hats that I knitted up as a baby knitter. Um, I first cast on this one, it was a baby Oslo hat. And um, I used Woolberry Fiber Co Company's uh, Berry Cashmere in the colorway I Don't Doubt, and then another mystery colorway because I thought I was gonna run out of yarn. Um, I just should have trusted the pattern and I would have been fine um, because when I measured how much yarn I had left, um, I literally would have been just fine with one exact skein. So this is the baby Oslo hat um, that I did for my daughter. And as you can see, this is, a folded brim it's by petite knit um, with a, like a triple layer folded brim because you um, knit for however long the pattern calls for and then you knit this together I think that mine this part doesn't look the same as it does for others um, I think that's just because I really only know how to do one type of cast on a knitted cast on and so that's why it kind of looks a little clunky for me there um, and so I need to work on learning some more cast ons, but it works and it doesn't matter because the brim folds it up and it looked large to me. I think that's partly because it's cashmere, um, and cashmere grows a little and cause I made the baby size and not the toddler size and my daughter's a toddler now and it's actually too big for her, but that's okay because it has it's fine here on her circumference of her head here, um, but it's a little big up here, but that's the style. Um, and so I don't know, I know that I made it, it with my gauge, it's too big in general. Um, so I might've needed to go up a needle size to hit gauge, but I wasn't as concerned. Um, just because she is a toddler and it would have been a shame if I had actually met Gage and it would have been too small for her. Um, and so I didn't meet Gage, but that's okay. Um, and this one I followed exactly. Like I followed the pattern exactly as it was written. The number of measurements, everything decreases everything. And I did really, really great. Even with my bind off and everything, it was perfect. Um, I was really proud of myself because this is now my third knitted object that I finished. The only thing is I will say that when I joined or when I went to um, knit, what was this? I forget, but I had a gaping hole here um, that I had to kind of like try to fill in. But again, it didn't really matter too much because you fold up the brim and you never see it. Um, and what's interesting is you know, it kind of already <laughs> almost fits me if I wanted like a tight skull cap. Um, but it's a little tight on me, but it fits her great. Um, she still hates wearing hats. So 
we we wore this up in the snow up in Mount Baldy yesterday and so she had some fun times trying to keep it on. <laughs> it was basically the game of me trying to keep her hat on and she trying to take it off. So this is my uh, first finished object of the video, my petite knit Oslo hat, baby. Um, so my second object was another Oslo hat. I kind of was on a high when I uh, finished this. I finished this in December um, and it only took me maybe, let's see. So this Oslo hat actually only took me about mm, 12 days um, to knit up. So I was really happy with that um, considering my, you know, newbie knitting skills. Um, and I was learning a few new things. And so I was really happy with that. Um, and so this I finished in December before the Christmas. Um, before Christmas and then on Christmas Eve I decided to cast on um, another Oslo hat. I had actually brought a few projects with me on our holiday travels um, and I by chance brought a skein of Surrey and a skein of cashmere, um, merino cashmere and um, I was like in case I want to cast on another Oslo hat. Well I did because it was very easy and therapeutic and um so this is the oslo hat and the colorways it's woolberry fiber again because i have a lot of um her yarn and so um this is woolberry fibers puget sound both the surrey and the um superwash merino cashmere blend are puget sound and i just held them double together um I modified this a little bit. I cast on the women's size or the adult small um, in it, but uh, for the width so that I would get a, a brim that would fit my head more than say my daughter's. But um, I know that I didn't want, um, it's got very much like a lot of extra room up here for a beanie. Um, and so I didn't want all this extra fabric up here. I wanted something that was more like a skull cap, like really tight against my head. So I modified this by um, not following pattern on the length that you're supposed to knit to here. Um, it was actually probably closer to my daughter's size. So that way I could get a much closer um, fit to it. And so... As you can see, there's no extra fabric here. It just kind of follows the shape of my head. Um, and I love it. I love Surrey. Like this has literally made me fall in love with Surrey. And um, because I had knitted something else with mohair and I'm, I don't wear that that often because it just gives me the itches. <laughs> and so, um, I can definitely see a lot more Surrey in my future. And so, um, and you'll see that later on in this video. And so that will be interesting because I think I'm going to look for some matching Surrey or some coordinating Surrey to go with some skeins in my stash for a sweater. I've got some mulberry fiber, um, berry cashmere. I have four skeins in the colorway Brava. So if I can find a... Surrey that would work well with it. I might hold that for a garment. That's why I'm kind of holding on to those four skeins because it's like it's enough for a garment. Um, if I, I mean, it's enough for like a knitted garment. Um, it's not enough for a crochet garment. Um, it might be, but it's not enough. So I'm if I get some Surrey, I can hold it with it. Um, because I'm actually working on a project that is holding fingering and Surrey together. And so I really love this. So I blocked both of them. So they're actually like completely done, finished objects, um, both of them. And uh, we've already worn them, worn them out uh, of the house. And so these are my petite knit um, Oslo hats. 
One is a baby size and one is a modified uh, adult size. So those are finished objects one and two. Um, the second hat took, let's see. Uh, the second hat I cast on on December 20th, January 13th. So that one took me a little bit longer, but it was because I was under... So I cast um, the second hosel hat on December 20th and I finished it on January 13th. That took me a little bit longer because I had to prioritize finishing um, a sweater for a test. Also, I got sick with COVID um, after the new year and so I didn't do much of anything but trying to like just survive <laughs> um, when I had COVID. So I didn't do any knitting or crocheting when I had COVID. And so that one took me a little bit longer. I definitely could have gotten it done faster, um, but I was kind of doing competing projects. And so let's, okay. So my next finished object, so this is finished object number three, and it's actually the last one for the video is my sweater weather test that I did for just the worsted and it's done and I love it. Um, I'll post some like stylized uh, pictures of it. I didn't wear it for this video just because I didn't want to change but um, this is the sweater weather by just the worsted and I am using Malabrigo Arroyo um, the pattern calls for DK weight. Um, actually, it calls for a fingering and a lace held together um, for a DK weight. Um, but I decided to try out this um, Malabrigo Arroyo because it's a sport slash DK, maybe a light DK. And um, I already had five skeins of it in my stash and uh, therefore I only needed a few more. Um, so I was like, I'm going to try to make this work. So I was able to make gauge. I actually went up half a hook size for the body. Um, and I, but I kept the gauge of the arm with what the pattern calls were, which I think is a five millimeter. And I went up to a five and a half for the body. Um, and... It's like an oversized cropped um, balloon sleeve um, pullover and it's Tunisian crochet and everybody thinks it's knit, but it's Tunisian crochet and I love it. And this really has cemented my love. I mean, I already loved Tunisian crochet, but I just, I loved working on it. I think once I got past the ribbing, the ribbing was like really hard for me in the beginning, but by the time I got to like the neckline and the arms, uh, the ribbing for the, the cuffs of the arm, the ribbing was fine for me. It was just like kind of that, that beginning hurdle. Um, and so this one took me about two months to finish. I probably could have finished it faster had I been more monogamous and had I not had some like difficulties in the beginning. Because in the beginning, I had measured the ribbing um, and it was like 49 or 50, it was 49 centimeters for the ribbing when you just start doing the ribbing. And it's not supposed, it's, I'm supposed to get a finished piece of like 66 or something like that for my size. And I was very short. So I added 10 more rows, um, but it grows off the ribbing. Like once you add on your rows, it starts growing tremendously. And I thought at one point, I don't know I was measuring it and I was tired or whatever but I thought the body was 78 centimeters and I was like that is way too big I and I was done the back panel and I didn't want to refrog and or frog it and start all over and so I kind of put it in a tiny amount and then I did the woe is me trail at like my stitch nights and uh with my stitch friends and I then decided to pick it up remeasure it and it was 70 so I don't I don't know what happened there or if it was different tape measures that were wrong or whatever, but um, I just decided to push through because I was like, it can be oversized. That's fine. And I'm actually happy with the width. Um, and so a few things that I would change, like I'm 
thinking about making another one, not anytime soon, um, but a few things that I would change. I would do negative easing on the arms. Uh, so you're supposed to measure this um, and whatever that is, you kind of knit or you crochet to that many rows for your ribbing. And I would do negative easing. The superwash just um, grew so much in terms of the ribbing, you really lose the ribbing and it, it and like the beauty of it um it's supposed to look a little bit more like um maybe like knit one pearl one ribbing um and it's so beautiful but you lose you lose it with the superwash at least with the malabrigo superwash so if i were to do this again i would do negative ease for that and also because that depends on how big your sleeve is so um it's supposed to be a balloon sleeve but i would have liked it to like maybe be like that you know instead of getting all of this um maybe about like four to six inches or more <laughs> less it still would have been big and oversized um so i would change that if i were to make it again i would also make my slips or my um collar taller because it's a folded uh collar so you do the ribbing around and then you fold it in and sew it in and I would love maybe like another inch honestly I would like a nice collar um that's on me I should have just measured it um instead of just fall I would should have just trusted my gut and just not I followed pattern um and I did the the number of stitches um and it just I still love it and I'm not gonna like go back and I don't have the time or the effort or the wherewithal to redo it but um I would like at least a half an inch more um in the final um rib ribbing here so probably an inch more but other than that I wouldn't I love this and um I phew, I it's it's heavy though like because uh it's Tunisian and um a lot of it's the knit stitch you're using a lot of yarn um and Tunisian knit stitch just eats a lot of yarn <laughs> and so um it's a nice winter piece that I've been wearing all the time um since it's been finished in like mid to late uh January so I've worn it probably half a dozen times already and it there's going to be a lot more wear for this in my future and so this is the sweater weather by Lindsay at just the worsted and I did size 2xl that's the size I tested um, but I cropped the length so I didn't follow pattern on the length because I didn't want something that was too long I really liked the cropped look of this um and yeah this is i love it this is it i love it no this is this is my second finished object of the year i did the blue oslo hat i finished this year and then this sweater um so i am now two out of 24 for my finished objects for the year for my goal um unfortunately neither one of these were on my make 12 I don't know why I didn't like help myself in that but doesn't matter I still um, am you know pushing away on my make 12 so that is all of my finished objects and I want to now go through my works in progress um, so my first work in progress it's been on the channel before you've seen it before I've made some progress and I'm trying to make like little bit more chunks by giving myself weekly goals to get through it because I think this is a project that I want to get it done but I don't want to like be monogamous with it um and so this is the Fairbanks shawl by Tony Lipsy and I am using Sorella use yarn um Tony collection I'm using all the minis and then I'm using um uh, the coordinating skein of the colorway Surf City 
which is one of the variegateds from the collection. And it really has all of the colors in it. Um, it's like a off-white, almost oatmeal base with all the variegated speckles. It's really kind of hard to see. I have one more skein. Um, and let's see, I am through, let's see how far I am. So there's 15 colors. Um, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've done eight colors out of 15. So I have seven more to go, um, which is actually perfect. Uh, so I'm using 15 of the minis and along with the coordinating Surf City uh, colorway. Hopefully I'm, I only have one more skein of that. So hopefully I have enough. If not, I'm not opposed to just ending the shawl early. Um, it's a pretty easy pattern. So if uh, it's just, uh, if you're a beginner, I highly recommend something like this. Um, I've modified it just a little bit. I've put in these kind of, um, what is it? Are these like T stitches or spike stitches? Um, when I start a new color, uh, about every 15 stitches, I think that it actually calls for it later in the pattern. Um, but I decided to do it earlier just to, to play around, um, and see what I liked. So, um, I am now doing this in bite-sized chunks. So like my next goal for this upcoming week, this is a really busy week for me is doing a, one color and one of the or one section of the of one of the minis and then one of the coordinating colors so I'll have two new stripes um hopefully by the end of this week um and then I will just kind of just work away on this um my next um work in progress did I call the Fairbanks shawl a finished object? Oops. Uh, but my next work in progress, and actually it's never been on the channel, um, and I'm pretty far. Um, I started this ooh, maybe about a, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, and it is actually the first uh, project on my Make 12, and that is the Muna Cardi from Tony Lipsy, TL Yarn Crafts. And this is the back panel. I'm done. And it's Tunisian crochet. And, and then I just finished the, uh, the front panels, uh, the left and the right. And now I'm working on, uh, I don't have my hook in here, but I am now working along um, this edging. It has a beautiful like honeycomb stitch edging along the inside of the cardigan. So I am now working through that. Um, and once I'm done that, I'll be able to just start working on the sleeves. And then um, my hope is to get this done in the next two weeks or so. Certainly it'll be done in February. Um, but my goal this week, just because it is a busy week, is to get the uh, inside ribbing done here. Um, and then anything else is extra. Um, and so it's a beautiful Tunisian crochet cardigan. Um, it's supposed to be made with negative ease, but I don't wear cardigans like that. And so um, I actually sized up to the 2XL, um, which I believe corresponds to a 50 inch bust, um, like finished bust. Um, and so I have a 43, so that will give me about seven plus inches of positive ease because I'm not sure if that 50 inches before blocking or after blocking. Um, but I, it, it fits really great so far in terms of, I mean, as great as I can actually fit it, but just seeing kind of the length and seeing it kind of come around here. Um, I did crop the length a little bit. Um, I didn't want it any longer than it was already turning out to be. But I am using the yarn um, Baliura Fibers, um, her Merino DK in the colorway Fingal's Cave. And it's a beautiful black, um, soft black. The one complaint I have is it's very 
um, because it's hand dyed yarn, there's a lot of variation between the skeins. So I've had to alternate skeins, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but as you can see, I didn't notice it right away. And so now I have this like stripiness in the back. It gets better. I think my first skein was just a lot lighter. Um, and if I really need to now, um, for the future, pay attention to like the full set of skeins. So that way I can um, make sure like I'm using it. Maybe I would have used that one on like an arm or um, as my last resort if I had like was gonna end up with extra skeins. And so a little disappointed I didn't do that, but you live and learn. And so um, I'm really excited to see this finished and have a nice new cardigan in my wardrobe because I wear a lot of cardigans and I wear a lot of or house coats and I wear a lot of cardigans to work and so it'll be really nice to have a cardigan made by me and so that is the Muna Cardi from Tony Lipsy as my second work in progress of the video. My next um, work in progress, I just cast it on not too long ago, and um, it is <laughs> not much. It doesn't look like much right now, um, but let's see if I can get it untangled. <laughs> so it's hard to tell because I have a provisional cast on with yarn that is not the right color, but... I'm using just junk yarn and uh, this is the start of a lento and I am now in the um, the neckline um, and doing the collar um, and so it's really slow going for me. Um, the knit one pearl one collar is just I don't I don't knit fast in general but certainly then doing knit and pearl um, is really cumbersome so um, I just noticed a mistake. No, it's fine. So this is the beginnings of a lento. It will probably take me some time. So this will probably be on the podcast uh, several times before, um, because this is my first knitted object too. So I've not knitted object, knitted garment. I've knitted several objects, but this is my first attempt at a garment. I thought it was a pretty easy pattern that I could do. I am using the Ruby and uh, Roses um, Surrey. So Rose Cloud, which is 75% Surrey, 25% silk, and it's so to die for, it's so soft. And then I'm using the Soft Rose, which is an 85%, 15% Superwash Merino and Nylon blend. Um, and this is, they're both in the colorway Mistletoe Mixer. And um, I gotten this because I wanted um, a Christmas sweater that didn't scream Christmas. And so it's these beautiful pops of like speckled color throughout um, that I feel like is gonna make a really great finished object. So I'm excited to see this work up. Um, I know that it'll get faster once I get past um, the knitted collar part and then get into like the the ra more raglan um shaping and uh increasing so baby lento on the needles um so excited to see i'm also trying to put um stitch stoppers uh or progress markers here just to kind of keep track so that when i check in with you guys next you can kind of see how far i've gotten on some of these projects um, so my goal for this week is to get the neck done, um, which I'm about, I was, I think I hit 11 or 12 rows. So I think I might have like 11 or 12 or something like that left. I don't remember, but I might have a half a dozen or a dozen or so, 10 or a dozen rows left to do, uh, which will take me all week. I mean, like, let's be real. Um, and so that is my hope for this week is to get this done. So those are my works in progress, the Municard or the Fairbank shawl, the Municardi, and the Lento. Um, I want to show you some upcoming projects that I have and I'm going to switch to black and white. 
So I have a test that I will put up uh, some photos. I'm doing a test for Violet Loop soon. I've tested for her before um, and it's called the Sincere Shawl and we're using yarn from Sincere Fiber Co. And um, it's going to be, I'm doing the Tunisian version, fingering weight Tunisian, and I'm gonna be using these beautiful colors that you can't see. But um, I'm really excited to see this work up. I have not cast it on yet, because um, actually it's something that I have to like, because the yarn is so dark, it's really hard to see some of the stitches, like at least to get started. I know that once I get bigger, it will be fine, but just getting those first few rows on the hooks, uh, I, t I tried it the other day and I'm like, this doesn't look right. And sometimes I just have to trust that it might not look right, but it actually is right. Cause I know that when I did her last pattern, it was the same way um, with the Tunisian full stitch and doing Tunisian crochet in the round. It didn't look right to me, but once I built on a couple rows, so I need to give it a fair shot. So my goal this week is to cast on this um, so that I at least can get a few rows cast on. Um, and then if I get any further, great. If I don't, that's okay too. Um, my only goal is to cast it on. So this is Sincere Fiber. I'll have more to share in the future, especially when I can share it in color. Um, so I won't go, I don't want to sit here for forever in black and white, but this will be exciting to show you, uh, get worked up. Um, cause it's also some, it's all stitches I've done before. Actually, no, it's a new Tunisian. There's a new Tunisian stitch in there called the ladder lattice stitch. I've not done that one. Um, but I've done all the other stitches in it. Um, I'm also slated. And so this will be due at the end of March. So Hopefully I'll get to show you the colors sometime then because I'm not clear when um, the colorways will be revealed. But as soon as they're revealed, I'll be able to show you things in color. Um, so I'll be working on that Sincere Shawl by Violet Loops with Sincere Fiber Company's uh, yarn. So I'm also going to be working on another shawl for her later in the spring called the Indecision Sampler. I don't have any details about the yarn that I'm gonna be using or anything like that because it's very early on. She just secured testers really early, um, but it's gonna be like a, um, a sampler shawl. So it's gonna be great to see all the different Tunisian crochet stitches worked up. I've seen some swatches that she's done, not of the whole shawl, but of like different um, swatches of like four by four swatches of uh, a purl stitch, a uh, you know lattice stitch, a honeycomb stitch, whatever. Those aren't the exact ones, but just various Tunisian and crochet stitches. And so I'm excited to see that growth and evolution of uh, of the shawl. Just being able to like be in almost from the ground up in the design process. She just wanted to get testers early on it and like. Basically, if you're willing to like not know much about what you're testing, then, you know, and I was like, I'm game. So that is the second kind of upcoming. I probably won't have that on until later this spring, probably in the late March, early April time timeline, um, because I don't think we're going to get the pattern until late March. And so this would be something that I would be working on in April and May. Um, I do know that it'll be due sometime in May. So next I just want to share a few things with you um, for a yarn. And um, I wanted to show this is a Sorella yarn cashmere sock in the colorway Hep Alien. It's from the Gilmore collection. And I'm going to make a top out of this. I don't know which top yet but I'm gonna make a top out of it. Um, and her cashmere sock is 801010. It's this gorgeous pink Hep Alien uh, from Lane Kim. Um, and pink really looks good on me. As you can see, I really like pink. Um, it looks really, really good on my skin. And so I'm gonna make a top out of this. The next one I wanted to show um, 
in the Gilmore pre-order was the um, Sorella's Classic DK in the colorway in Omnia Paradis. Um, it's after Logan, Rory's boyfriend, Logan. It's this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Um, I am likely going to make a pullover or a cardigan with this. Um, so I'm really, really, really happy with this blue. I saw this and I was like, ugh, I gotta have it. Um, so yeah, in DK, so it's 100% superwash merino. And the other thing I wanted to shout out, um, my local yarn store had a trunk show um, with the Royal Bee Yarn Company. And I actually saw the Royal Bee Yarn Company at um, SoCal Fiber Fair. And um, I didn't get anything there at the time. And then when I found out my local yarn store was going to um, bring in a trunk show, I was like, oh, I gotta check it out. So I did. And um, the first colorway I got was um, Raspberry Rotolite. Um, it's fingering weight. It's 80% um, superwash merino and 20% recycled nylon, which is really cool. I mean, her recycled nylon blends are just so plump and soft and squishy. Um, so I'm going to make another probably top out of this knitted top. Um, not sure again which one yet, but definitely going to make a knitted top out of this. And last but not least, I got um, enough for a sweater in this um, for the, this is called DK um, Pink Frosted Donut. It's 100% super fine um, superwash merino. There's 240 yards um, and it's this uh, semi-solid tonal um, pink and it's just gorgeous again as you can see like I like pink and so we're gonna have some good fun with this stuff so just wanted to share a couple of those updates with you that is it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you're not, if you're already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for coming back. I really, really, really do appreciate it. I will see you in the next video. I have, I'm still trying to figure out how often I'm going to do podcasts, whether I'm going to stick to monthly or if I'm going to try to do bi-weekly podcasts. We'll see. Um, but as I mentioned at the top of the video, I'm going to be moving podcasts into like a yearly collection instead of trying to keep track of number 200 or something. Not that I have 200, but I'm probably going to do a podcast playlist. So I've already done that and put 2023 podcasts into a playlist for you. So if you need to catch up on anything, um, and then this will be the first episode for the 2024 podcast series. So um, check it out. Thank you so much for watching friends and I will see you in the next one. Bye now.